uh, let me make the announcement then. Uh, yep. Okay, should we give it like five minutes? Until, yeah, we'll uh... just wait for a few more people to join. Yeah, sounds good. Hello, J. Roneal. Oh, you were just playing Penny. Nice. Last time I played Penny. Um. game maybe three, probably like three or four times yeah wow nice I, I, I don't know how many runs i've actually like completed all the way through to the end <laughs> just because I, I reset a lot in like vanilla town especially vanilla town is reset haven mm-hmm To any new joiners, we're just waiting for a few more people to join before we uh, get started with it. I kind of like this event system actually. Mm -hmm. it's, it's my first time using it, but like it seems quite uh, fancy. 
everyone talking at the same time. God, <laughs> I, was, I was in a VC like a few days ago, and there must have been like 20 people in there. And it was like a, a brawl with the devs event, in a, like play with the devs kind of event. Oh yeah, like there, were, there were just there were just so many people speaking at once. It was kind of kind of chaotic. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, World's Edge tricks you into being the final world. <laughs> Oh yeah, I think that happens a lot. People get to World's Edge and they're like, oh, this is the final level. And then they're like, okay, I'm like not even close to done, which I think is a good surprise. Yeah, I, I definitely didn't expect there to be as many worlds as there are. I, I thought there would be like six. Yeah, I don't even think people like bring up enough how content dense the game is because it's like, it's pretty insane for such a small team. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's genuinely like really impressive. We will give Yolk Bite two seconds while they <laughs> eat and finish their dinner. <laughs> Launch base zone. Is, is that like a Sonic? Um, reference. I, I haven't played a lot of Sonic games, admittedly. That is Sonic. Nice. Alright, I guess we can start when whenever Yokebite comes back. Because uh, Yokebite <laughs> did ask the first question, so. It's, it's true, yeah. I wonder if we, okay, so now there are people typing in the Palace Court channel and also the event discussion channel. We should probably, you think you should just delete the event discussion channel? Um, yeah, I, th I think people have taken to the Palace Court chat, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to, I'll edit the announcement as well. So uh, apologies, Shama Boy, we are in um, <laughs> the Palace Court chat. <laughs> Audio stopped working, oh no. Oh man. Dude, what is Yokbite eating? I I don't know. Like an entire we, might have, we might have to ask them when they get back. This isn't a, a Sean QA anymore, it's a it's a Yolk <laughs> QA. Tell you what, how about we answer the other questions and then when Yoke gets back, yep, we answer that one. Yep. All right. So I will just get started. So thank you guys for showing up to the event. Um, so the event questions are in the channel called event questions. I don't know if I, I am not sure if I'm gonna be taking questions during the call. So the ones before before the call, I will answer, but if you guys want to put in more questions, I will just kind of decide if I want to answer them and don't be offended if I don't, because um, I just would rather have time to think before answering things. But 
yeah, feel free to to add more questions if you want. Just no guarantee if I'll answer them. But anyway, so for the questions that were asked, a few of them are kind of, um, I can kind of lump together into one answer. So there's a lot of track, a lot of questions asking me what my favorite track was, or what's my favorite track in the game, um, my favorite song to make, um, the best track I've ever composed. So all of those, I would say, it's kind of a tie between Penny and a Pinch, which is the Penguin Ball song, and Land Ho Diablo. Um, because both of those, I felt like, even if, if Evening Star had hired me and was like, literally just make any track you want to make, like literally just make like a song that you would like the most, those are like the tracks that I would make. So even if they weren't like for anything, those were just, I was just like, basically hype the entire time. I was just like, these are, you know, just like, these are like my, this is like my ideal music. Cause I just love super high energy, detailed, like frantic music. Uh, and like, that's a lot of the things I work on are just people getting me to do that. So it ended up working really well that I did mostly boss themes on Penny, uh, which also leads into my least favorite track is probably the judge rufus cutscene song because lit the thing is i don't dislike any of my tracks because i i would kind of feel like like a bad person if i submitted work i didn't like to evening star because they paid me so i pretty much every I, everything i submitted i'm happy with but i think judge rufus cutscene song would just be my least favorite because it was the one I had kind of the least opportunity to kind of like show off with and get like show off my signature style, I guess, uh, even though um, I think it, it works really well for the scene. I kind of uh, um, kind of held back on that one for the purpose of like fitting the, the scene. So, yeah, those are would be my favorite and uh, least favorite. Um. The software I use when composing is uh, Cubase. I and the plugins I use, I use a lot of plugins. Like I use like a stupid amount of plugins, and pretty much any one of my songs will have over a hundred different tracks in them. So I stack, I stack like it's like so many sounds. So even if you hear like one lead melody, I do it's probably like 10 different instruments all playing the same notes at the same time because that's just kind of like that's just how i prefer to to write music because i think if you combine a lot of different timbres together it kind of creates one big sound that's kind of unique uh that's a technique that someone called phil specter kind of pioneered in the in the 60s called wall of sound and it's very cool and i i abuse it all the time and my favorite part is it it kind of makes it so that even if you use a recognizable sound source like uh say Roland Sound Canvas or or M1 which T used constantly in Sonic Mania to the point where it's become like kind of a meme that they use it so much um if you combine a lot of patches into like kind of one sound then it becomes kind of like its own thing and you can give every game and every song you make its own uh its sonic identity so i think that is cool um, in terms of like, if I try to think of some stuff I use just off the top of my head, I use a ton of like classic, uh, romplers, which are like synths that are based on samples. So like, uh, Roland JV 1080, uh, Korg Triton, uh, Roland sound canvas. Um, but then I also use, um, since Penny has such a heavy focus on using, uh, the Moog synthesizer, which is a type of synth that was made in the um i guess it was in the 60s or if it just got used in the 60s but it's that kind of like meow, 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 kind of synth you hear all throughout the you know penny it's just like meow, 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 meow. <laughs> just like a lot of people hate it because it sounds like super like high high frequency and <laughs> and kind of grating um but it like obviously it fits penny's character so well because she's like ridiculous um so that was kind of christian's idea to make that part of the uh, sonic identity for the game or just <laughs> um 
uh, out to my knowledge, this is not being recorded. Um, uh, I don't know if maybe if someone wants to start recording, they can um, and like post it in the server. I don't know, um, but it's not not being officially recorded. Okay, someone is recording it. Cool. Um, all right. So, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So the Moog uh, was a big focus, and for that, I used um, a recreation of that in plugin form uh, by Native Instruments called Monarch, uh, and it's a pretty faithful recreation and. I kind of, at the start of the project, I made myself a bunch of presets that I would use throughout the soundtrack. And then I just kind of like, um, pick, you know, pick those presets per song, but there's also a lot of, uh, kind of different and kind of creative uses of the Moog on it. Like for example, in the level select theme, um, hello macaroon, there's like at the beginning, there's kind of like a, an effect right at the start. There's like a it's kind of like a like a downward kind of spacey effect and that's also the mode but it's like turning the knobs to do like cool effects kind of things rather than just being like uh then strictly just being melodies or or you know accompanying parts of the song so that's using mode more as like uh an effect than uh, uh actual musical instrument um let me see is the yoke bite here so i can answer his... okay yoke bite is here okay um so kind of leading into that uh Yogbite asks if there were any styles the team had to keep in mind. So basically, me and T did not really decide how the game would sound. It was entirely Christian Whitehead's vision. So Christian Whitehead um, came up with how the soundscape would be. Um, even not, he didn't like technically like T still made the initial demo, but Christian basically described exactly how it should sound. He's like, it needs to be Moog. Like uh, there's an artist called. Someone brought up Electrical Parade. Uh, that's by um, uh, an artist called Jean-Jacques Perret. And that was like the the main kind of uh, North Star for the soundtrack was specifically his work, his pioneering work with the Moog synthesizer uh, on Electrical Parade and stuff. And that is why, uh, I don't know how many people have caught this specifically, but the track Jigs Up Penny is, the, if you listen like the name Jigs Up Penny, it, the form is supposed to kind of sound like Jean-Jacques Perret because, you know, the Perret part is Penny and then it, it would just start with a J. Um, it doesn't like exact. So it's the reason I don't think a lot of people have caught it because it's not like an exact kind of, uh, it's not an exact play on words. When we were kind of just debating it, I was like, I was just like, oh, if, this would make no sense. But what if it's called Jean Jacket Penny? But that, that would make no sense for for, for a song title. Uh, I think I uploaded like an image of Penny in a Jean Jacket. But um, um, yeah. Uh, so that was that was a huge influence. Like uh, Christian would specifically like link Jean Jacques. Perret. Yeah, Vanilla Town was uh, the, the epitome of like just do just do kind of electrical parade for this. Um, I didn't I didn't work on Vanilla Town, but I watched uh, some of the process of that. Um, and um, kind of more of the experience of working with T and Christian. So the way that it worked out that I worked on this was uh, I was not part of the project from the beginning. It was originally uh, T Lopes was going to do the whole soundtrack, but because T is like super freaking successful and he's like on like a billion different projects, they were like, they were they were all kind of like okay it would probably be good to like you know get you know someone on to to take on some of the tracks and they decided it'd be a good idea to split up the tracks in a specific way where T could do all the stage themes and kind of define how those sounded but then on the flip side I would do the majority of the boss themes and I would kind of decide how those sounded so there are a few boss themes that I didn't do so there's the Eddie uh Eddie, like, uh, the Eddie Boston bathhouse. I didn't do that. The one that's like, duh, 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 duh. that was T. He did, he did a great job on that. And the giant penguin boss was Hunter Bridges, who was actually the game director. Uh, he's very multi talented, uh, Hunter Bridges. And he was also project manager on Sonic Mania. And he's, uh, he did sound design on Sonic Mania too. He's a, he's really, he's really cool. Um, so he did, um, that giant penguin song, but then Hunter also worked on one of the Star Globe tracks, the what like the kind of like the slower, spacey one. The, the, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that's that's Hunter. 
Yeah, Stargazer. Um, I don't I don't actually remember a lot of the track names because for so long we used uh, code names. So like Tideswell, for example, for the entire development, it was just called Coast. We would never called it. it would, Tideswell was like a thing that came at the end. So whenever someone says like Tideswell, I'm like, what, I'm like, what the hell is Tideswell? I'm like, oh, it's Coast. And they're just, or someone says like Gala Night. And I'm like, what, you mean Vanilla Town Redux? <laughs> That's what that was called. Um, um, like all of them just had like really generic like setting names, which like, which worked. Um, also in terms of style, there was, even though we were given direction to have a focus on Moog synths, when they were bringing me on, they also were like, you don't really have to adhere too much to a style because if you listen to some of the level themes, they kind of like go way off into their own thing like like uh pengoville which is just like doop, 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 or uh um industria like both those are just like they're just like insane they're just like they go off on they do like edm edm style stuff um and so that just having those tracks available because those were all done by the time i joined so i was like okay just having those tracks existing means i don't have to like focus too hard because i i also wouldn't want to have it be like um i i didn't want my work to feel too restricted like i was just trying to sound like t because even though i feel like i could still do a good job trying to sound like t i also felt like it would be kind of doing the game a disservice because i'm not t so i literally can't do t's music better than him i can only do my own i can only do my own style of music better than him um, and he can do his own style of music better than, than I can because we're, we're separate people. Um, oh God, I'm very silence is here. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so where was I? So basically, um, that was kind of the guide for the sound i'm so thrown off that inverted silence is here sorry <laughs> um okay i'll move on to another another question for now so my creative process when making penny in a pinch also leads into another question where someone asked what the first track i made was and also if i had a track that got um that got uh, scrapped so i didn't get i didn't get any of my tracks scrapped but the story behind penny and a pinch existing is actually extremely interesting it's basically the only kind of interesting song scrap change story that i have on the whole thing um wait um so what happened with um with Penny and the Pinch was it was actually originally made for the boss fight with Sheila. So the boss fight with Sheila originally had I that's what I wrote it for. I wrote it for for Penny and a Pinch. Uh sorry for the um for Sheila's boss fight because originally it was kind of like the only the only guidance they gave me was it's like it needs to start off like super frantically cuz Sheila's boat is going out of control and um then it just kind of needs to sound like a, a boss fight version of the stage tracks and so i went like super lighthearted with it because i was kind of listening to stuff like vanilla town and i was like okay there needs to be kind of like kirby boss fights like i feel like all of the songs should be like they should sound like kirby boss fights um because that's kind of the the vibe of the game and I, and kirby boss fights are like amazing like kirby kirby's like the best boss fights ever um and so i uh, wrote it for that, and then they didn't. They didn't reject it. They were like, "Oh, this is good." And uh, Hunter especially loved it. He was like, "He was just like, oh, this is great. It's like a, it's like Kirby uh, style." And then Christian was kind of like, he he thought it would actually fit the fight, but we were kind of unsure if it fit Sheila's character like story wise. So we kind of sat on it for a bit, and that was the first track I I did for the game. Um, it was kind of like my uh, test track in a way. Um, and since, even though it didn't fit what they wanted, it was still like, they still liked the song itself. So, so I, <laughs> I got to do more. Um, but at some point they were like, oh, so that penguin ball thing that we have right now, it just plays the vanilla town music again. So, you know how often vanilla town already plays in the game it was going to play even more. It was going to play another stage where the penguin ball was just going to be vanilla town. 
And then they were just like, actually, the song that Sean wrote for Sheila actually fits the Penguin Ball thing really well. So that, so then they just added it to that, and then they were just like, oh, I guess it fits the the world's the world's edge boss fight too, which is really funny because it was the first track I did. It didn't fit what I wrote it for, and it ended up like making its way to two places in the game just like randomly. Um, and I, it ended up being like I think is my most popular track in the game. Like that's when I check streaming numbers and YouTube views and everything. Like that's the one that has the the most attention. So I don't know if it's like a lot of people's the favorite or something. I remember I was watching uh, Games Cage uh, stream the game, and when he heard that song on on the Penguin Ball song, he was just like, "Oh man, this is like such a." He was like, "This is definitely T Loves. This is such a T Loves song. It's like clearly, it's obviously T." And then I was just thinking, like, okay, he didn't say that about he didn't say that about any of T's songs. That's why I thought it was so funny, because he just like he said he didn't say any of T's songs sounded like T, but he heard mine. And then the same thing happened with Mr. Q's fight when he got to Mr. Q. He was like he's just like, oh man, this is so T Lopesy. I was just like, okay, was, I thought that I thought that was, <laughs> that was amazing. Um, I also I appreciate that retroactive. It uh, Penny in a Pinch was definitely my most. My most Donut Dodo esque song on the soundtrack, um, Busker Bonus was also probably the other. When I did Busker Bonus song, like literally, um, when I posted it in the in the work chat for the game, the game director's reaction was he like he like added like a Dodo emoji react to it because it sounded so much like Donut Dodo, and then he just like and then he just his only reply was Donut Dodo OST, and then that was it. And I was like, okay, I guess it's approved. I don't know. I don't know if that's like me approving the song or not, but um, yeah, so that was with uh, what happened with that. And uh, let me look at some other questions. Um, what track was the most challenging to make? The most challenging track to make, I would say, off the I don't, I let, let me look at the, the track list actually. I need to, I need a refresher. I think the most. So I would kind of answer this uh, two ways. I would answer this uh, for, okay, so the final boss theme was the one that I spent the most time on by far. That was kind of because the concept I went for with the song was the kind of thing that I needed to put in like an insane amount of hours just to execute it properly because um, it was supposed to be kind of the composition was a lot more minimal than a lot of my tracks in Penny, and I was gonna sell it with like huge production basically, um, and that just resulted in me working on that song for like like sixty hours, probably more than that, like literally total, um, where just like refining it, and yeah, like le legitimately, and that was like that's like way longer than I spent on anything else in the game. But that was like such an important track to me that I was like, this one I really need to like, I really need to get it right and I need to, I need to sell it properly. Um, ironically, I spent way more time on it than I did for the the end credits medley, which is literally like, it's like four minutes long. So it's like the final boss one <laughs> is, um, is like, uh, it just took longer based on the production alone. Uh, and I actually forgot about the staff credits when I was talking about my favorite track. That actually is also is up there with my favorite tracks. I think Penny and a Pinch, Flanho Diablo, and the and the staff credits one are are my favorites. Um, I think that the staff credits one is like really well liked, like within Evening Star, because I remember uh, my friend Tommy visited the studio one time and he and he brought me up, and then the design director Brad was just like, "Oh, the guy who did the staff credits medley," because <laughs> it's just like how. Just, I'm just like represented by that song basically within Evening Star, <laughs> um, which makes sense because they worked on the game for so long, and then they get to hear like all these takes on their on the songs that they've been like hearing for like a million hours when testing the game. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, the other thing that I have actually n I realize I've actually never brought this up publicly, but uh, pretty much every song that I wrote for the game, including the launch trailer song, which I also did. A lot of people don't know I wrote the launch trailer theme too. T didn't do that. That was me. Um, is um, I recorded all of the guitar myself. So it's all live guitar and I record all of it. So Johnny Atmo is only involved. Actually, that's not true. Lanto Diablo, Johnny Atmo played the guitar. All of my other tracks, I played the guitar. Um, and then Johnny Atmo played guitar for all of T's tracks. Um, 
so like final boss um final boss uh hello macaroon that's that's my guitar playing um and that was very fun to do but the, also i'm real the thing is i'm really bad at guitar so like johnny atma is extremely good at guitar so whenever he got brought on to do something he would just he would just do it like immediately and send it he's like amazing and so me i'm bad at guitar but because i have like the power of recording technology i can like pretend like i'm good at guitar because i can just do like a million takes so i feel like at the end like my final solo in in final boss which i was really happy with i feel like it sounds pretty good but i can't actually like play that all the way through live because it, like i'm not i have a major skill issue with guitar but um that was yeah i'm i'm really happy with that came out and that definitely contributed to final act uh being like a, an extremely time consuming process um and that was that was my first part of the the uh, answer but the second part is lando diablo i didn't spend as much time on it as final act but because my previous song for sheila had been basically rejected but like moved to penny and the uh the penguin ball thing I was like really on edge about like getting it right that th this time because I kind of was like I was really worried that if I like failed two times and the Christian Whitehead would just hate me and think I was stupid. So I was like, okay, this one I have to like really make sure I, I get right. So I think Christian linked some kind of song that was like it was just kind of like a, a almost like a generic kind of rock song, but it had a really um, unique kind of drum beat where it's like doom, 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 but like it's like it was like a th really thrashy beat, and I was just kind of like, I I think I can do something like that, but um uh, eventually, but the thing is, when, every time I kept trying something, it sounded way too like generic rock or metal for Penny, and I was like, this is not really fit the game, and also I just don't really like a lot of music like like I think it's good, but I just wanted to really make an impression with my tracks and i uh, and i wanted it to like really ooze the game's personality and i just felt like that kind of style didn't do that much and so then i was just like okay what if i just added like a super thick like slap bass like it was just like the song was basically just based on like this just like a slap bass riff that's layered with like a bunch of synths and it just kind of like plows through with the drums and that the song is kind of built on that and so I put together like a pitch of like, it was kind of just the the main melody of the song with the the bass and the drums, and when I sent it in, Christian was like, was like, okay, I need to think about this because Christian is really like, Christian's like a genius, and he has to like he has to like um like, when whenever someone pitches a new idea, he has to like really think about it, and then he like he he listened to it and he came back after a day and he was like he's like okay it can be, it can be based on slap bass I think, uh he was like it's kind of cool if uh if all the tracks have like their own instrumental identity in a way and uh, like for example the opengoville being the uh four on the floor edm kick that's kind of that signature and industry having those super saws the 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 and like the bit crushed um so those kind of like instrumental signatures are i think why uh christian kind of leaned into it a bit and and yeah and then i finished the track but I only was able to finish it after like laboring it over it for like so long before I even put anything down because a lot of the way that I write music is I don't actually write music in the software. Um, the majority of the time, uh, what I do is I generally I get footage of the game or I see concept art or something and then I just kind of um, let it sit in my brain and then I go for a walk or something and I just kind of let the song form in my head a little bit. And I just try to, I like, I literally just like try to think really hard. I literally tell my brain, I'm like, okay, what would, what would a really good song be? Like, like what, if, it, if someone made a good song for this, theoretically, how would it sound hypothetically? And then literally that makes like a song, like appear in my brain. Um, it's not always a good song, but um, yeah. So, so yeah, so it's, I, it's, I think it's pretty popular with music makers. And then when I have to, the thing is I can't always remember them. So I have to like get out my phone and record like a voice memo yeah like a voice memo of music I'm like dun, dun, dun. i'm i'm pretty I, pro I probably have like voice memos for like the majority of my penny songs somewhere where i was just like finish it dun, 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 dun. except i don't really know exactly a lot of the times like what the actual notes will be i just kind of know the shape of the notes and then when i get into the software i kind of fill in the blanks a little bit uh harmonically and and melodically so yeah um with 
Lando Diablo, I was in that phase for so long where I could, before I could even like do anything on the track. I was just in the phase of just like thinking about it and like, and, uh, and just noting stuff down and being like, no, this sucks. And like trying something on piano and be like, oh no, it sounds bad. And I would make sketches in the, in, in Cubase and be like, okay, this, no, this sounds bad. And I, I went through so many variations of that. Um, uh, I went through less of that on final act, but I would say that the total amount of time I spent on final act was more, but uh yeah that's uh yeah a piano app is is uh an okay method for that but i always find that my ideas are way too like kind of long for that to be viable for me and also like i i feel like when i sing something out and listen to it later i can kind of like know what headspace i was in somehow like i always just kind of i always just kind of like think back and i was like oh yeah i think i remember i was that chord sometimes in the voice memo i even like note down it has to be has to go from the five to the six chord and it has to have a, the flat seven in it or something and i'll like literally put that in the voice memo in the title so then i'll be like hearing my singing combined with that note of what chord i want to go somewhere it helps me like remember the entire rest of, of what i was thinking so that's uh that's my that's my tip for that um someone asked if i got to pick and choose what tracks i worked on or if i was given specific assignments um so I mentioned before that the idea was kind of that it would be split up uh, as in like I would do the boss themes and he would do the stage themes, but that, that wasn't something that I decided. It was, um, it was exactly like before, like when I got my first contract and before I was on the game, they had already written a full list of all the songs I was going to do. So like all, um, all 10 of my songs were all like, they, those were the, that was the plan from the beginning because again, I came in, I came in late in development where T had already like, I think that by the time I joined, literally every level theme was already done. So I actually had a lot to draw from. I could literally just like listen to all of T's uh, level themes and get inspired, which was really helpful. Uh, and even though T and, and myself didn't collaborate directly a whole lot, just having access to that means I could, I could just spin his song, just have them, just have them on all the time and just kind of let them seep into my brain. And so I, I kind of get the style and let that inform my compositions. So that was, uh, that was very helpful for me. Um, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't choose any of my songs. Uh, there were a couple occasions where I was kind of, uh, they felt I was kind of like overtasked because I just, I had to do so much in such a short period of time. And Hunter was like, oh, I'll do a busker bonus and, and level select. And then I was like, those are literally the songs I was the most excited to do because I love, I love doing like UI and menu stuff because I think it's amazing when you're on a menu and it just like, it just like, it's way more of a banger than you expect. So that was like why, I, that's why level select sounds like that. It was like, because I just like, I just love that in games. And so I like insisted on doing it, even though it was like, it was a lot of work to do the amount of tracks I had to do um at the time but i was so i was so set in my vision for that song because i also wanted um that song to kind of sound like a, a big inspiration for me that song was i don't know if you guys know the um when in mario kart 8 the kind of um online uh, like lobby the online lobby in mario kart 8 where it's like do 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 um the way that kind of uses like spacey sounds i was just like i looked at the level select theme and i saw that there was like concept art for it and i i was like oh my god i have to use those kind of like that's the arpeggios in the background i'll kind of reminisce out of that or like the do do and then of course i have the the moog lead on top of it and originally didn't actually have a guitar solo it just kind of like played the instrumental but again but without the melody and that was like super lame so i, I added a guitar solo at the last second there's a lot of things like that that I, they actually weren't in like the approved track that I sent in. But then when we sent it off for mixing, they were like, they were like, hey, Sean, can you export stems for mixing? And I was like, sure. And, th and then I just like secretly added like three guitar parts right at the end because I was just like, I have got want to have more details. So I just like, just threw in like more instrument parts right before the stems were supposed to be sent off. It was just like, okay, this is like, <laughs> they, they probably won't notice. And then and nobody noticed. Um, I, I don't know if they noticed or just didn't, didn't care. They probably didn't care. But like they were so busy with other aspects of the game that they didn't really have time to be like like <laughs> policing the like random additions I made. So that was kind of cool because there were a lot of things I just 
you know, as a creative, you just want to add more of your own flair a lot of the time. And kind of the more, to me, it feels like the more details I can add, the more the song will kind of connect to the listener because it's kind of more, um, it's more of your voice coming through relative to being like, it's not just like, oh, this is the melody I wrote. It's like, this is the melody I wrote, but then I also ornamented it in this very specific way, or I added this specific flourish or something. Um, the more of that you do, the more it kind of becomes your own, I think. And you don't want to do a lot of that at the same time as each other because it can get distracting. So a lot of times you want to kind of space it out. Um, like uh, if you listen closely to a lot of my tracks, you'll notice that a lot of the kind of flourishes I do in the background or like uh, kind of counter melodies, they all take place in the space between the melody a lot of times. So if you listen on Final Act, for example, um, there's a lot of things uh, in the melody where like when the melody kind of has a space, the arpeggios have an extra layer come in. It's it's very subtle, but they have an extra layer come in that is like a lot louder than the, the arpeggios in the background. And that's to kind of like keep the interest, but also just like make it so it's not literally just a melody on top of a backing. It's kind of like that way the instrumental is like interacting with the melody in a really cool way so that you have kind of uh, almost like a trade-off or uh, kind of like in a, in, a, in a jazz context, you would have uh, a piano uh, solo trading off with a bass or something. Um, just like that's always a, a really cool sound. So uh, that is a, a thing that I like to do. Um, more questions. Um, I haven't even, I haven't gone to any of the, the ones uh, that were asked after the thing, but yeah, but. Um, uh, someone said, as far as I understand it, okay, they're not here, so I don't even, I don't know if anyone even cares about this, <laughs> but uh, they asked about Penny's uh, MIDI utilization. Um, so I didn't directly do any implementation work into the engine, but uh, I, I've, a lot of you probably noticed that on the level select song, the uh, world, like, the world marker like bounces exactly to the beat of the music. It's like every kick and snare hit, it kind of bounces a little bit. And that was not something that I even asked for or like knew was going to happen. And then when so, and then uh, the uh, programmer, uh, Justin implemented it. And I was like, Oh my God, there's like such an honor to have like, um, dynamics, uh, stuff like done with my, my tracks. And uh, the way that that was accomplished was I just exported a MIDI of just the kick and snare. And then just after I exported them, then that was kind of the, um, it just kind of automatically synced up from there. Uh, actually, I think that at some point, Christian was like, I really don't like how this bounces. I don't like it. But then he just like forgot. Uh, so it just ended up like, that. so I don't think, I don't actually think Christian likes it, but he just forgot to change it. Um, but, but I don't care. I like it. I think it's cool. Um, the other kind of thing that they did with my music is actually the same guy as Justin. Justin is great. I don't know if you guys know, Justin is like a famous YouTuber. He had a channel called RM, like RMVG. Um, and he worked on this game. He did a bunch of programming. Um, and he's he's really awesome. And so he he programmed stuff on, um, he worked on Hat, Hat in Time too. Um, he programmed the thing on the staff credits where like when you, uh, when each of the level things come up in the mel in the medley, it like shows like when Eddie's theme plays, it shows like Eddie comes on to the credits or whatever. That was another thing that I, I really wasn't expecting they would do, but but Justin was just like just was like, oh, I have to do this. Um and it, it's awesome just having those silhouettes come in like kind of timed to the music because I think it um I think people have low attention spans and that's something to kind of keep the interest uh, on top of j just the music. Um, cause nobody actually like reads like the credit of people, but this is, this is fine. I don't care. Um, I, I just want, I just want people to listen to my music. Um, but yeah, that, that was really cool as well. Uh, most of the dynamic stuff was not done with my music because, um, the most of the game's dynamic stuff is with the level tracks. Uh, you guys definitely notice that when penguins latch onto you, the track changes and they all, they, and they all got uploaded as like pengo mix. Um, <laughs> um, 
and that the way that works is that Hunter kind of rigged up a thing with Nitty that was like as soon as penguins latch onto you, it plays uh, like a Tim Bale, uh, a Tim Bale fill that is like syncs exactly to the beat of the music. So like um, it's like you know that 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 leads into the thing, and that that's all tempo mapped with all of them, and that was that was Hunter's idea, and um, originally actually how. Uh, I don't even know how much of this I'm allowed to say, but I don't. But they they let me do this, so I mean, I'll just say whatever. Um, uh, originally, how the dynamic music worked with the penguins was um, it would literally play the dyna- the pango mix anytime penguins were on screen at all. So it was literally like uh, penguins would burst through the walls, and then the music would change to the pango mix. And uh, it basically meant that unchangeably, like four times every stage, the music would change to the penguin. And it would stay for so long because penguins can stay on your tail for so long. So, I mean, as as a player, a lot of people on the team were like really annoyed by it because it was like you you couldn't do the entire level without the the music changing because like the music is so good. Sometimes you just want to like chill to the music. You just want to like listen to the music. Um, but yeah, so eventually I think someone brought it up and it it was it was a cool idea. So it's the kind of thing where it's like you hear it and it sounds really cool. Like all in theory it sounds awesome, but then when you actually play the game, it was really it just it just kind of got your nerves when you're just trying to chill with the music. Um as a result though, I kind of feel like the final repetition is really cool, but I also feel like it it kind of ended up having such a small impact that um I I kind of don't even know if it, if many people even like like that feature or not. I I'm not sure, but I think it's really cool. Um the it's especially like a lot of people were kind of like um the having it the, the thing that I don't understand is I I don't feel like I get caught by the penguins very often. I don't know why everyone seems like they keep getting caught by the penguins, but I'm just like I I just like you just dash out of the way. <laughs> Um, all right, so more questions. Let me see. How did it feel to work with T. Lopes and Christian Whitehead when composing for Penny's Virgo? It felt great. I, when I played, I played Sonic Mania in 2017 when it came out and it was my favorite game ever. And I thought the soundtrack was the greatest thing I've ever heard. And I was like the ultimate like T Lopes fan, and I was like, I like sent him like annoying DMs on on Twitter, like, oh, what, what plugins do you use or something? Um, I was like, I was like that guy, and uh, <laughs> um, and so the end. I would on YouTube, I used to make um Sonic Mania eight bit covers. So I don't know if any of you have seen them. They were from like 2016. As I made a bunch of when uh when I went only by Cosmic Jam, I made a bunch of eight bit uh fa- like fama tracker covers of of T Sonic Mania songs they did like uh hard boiled heavies and studiopolis x2 and stuff uh but like that was like how much i liked the soundtrack that i made like multiple oh cool you listen to that's great yeah i made like multiple covers of of T songs back then because they were so good um they right now they're all unlisted but you can still see them if you go to my youtube channel go to playlists i have all my old videos archived so if anyone wants to Look at those, or they're over there. Um, but um, yeah, so I was that big of a fan of Sonic Mania, and then like Penny was like re- much later because the di- the distance between Sonic Mania and Penny was was massive. As I'm sure you guys know because, um, and the reason for that was m- uh, mostly because they were developing like a brand new unique uh, 3D engine called Star Engine and uh, that's what Penny runs on. It's just a total unique custom built engine, uh, which is why they're able to get like crazy 4K 120 FPS stable on on like Xbox. Uh, and also incidentally, I think it's why uh, it partly contributed to why uh, porting to Switch was was such a pain and why they weren't able to get uh, stable 60, but I know they worked so hard to get 30 FPS, and it was really awesome. I loved seeing how hard they were working. It was it was great. There, I really admire that team. Um, and sometimes I feel like 
just speaking as myself, I don't work at Evening Storm as a contractor, but I honestly feel like the team doesn't get enough credit for how impressive their work was on this. Like it was such a monumental task to be make a 3D engine from the from the ground up, make an original 3D game, like just completely basically going in blind with no experience and then like delivering a, a great game. So uh, I feel like they deserve more credit for that. I think that was that was really cool. And that has nothing to do with my involvement because uh, I think my songs are, are terrible. Just kidding. But I, yeah, so. Uh, anyway, uh, when I got the kind of call to work on Penny, it, I was just like extraordinarily honored because I loved Sonic Mania so much. And um, it was kind of, it was definitely like a dream come true moment. Also just to be on t's radar at all was so cool to me because i was such like a huge fan of him and uh and uh, i'm actually working with him right now on something else it's secret uh so that is cool um and um yeah and also uh working with christian was great too because christian is like a genius uh, and also he's like very hard to get a hold of so it kind of felt like uh it felt like a weird thing to like be able to to talk with him so closely in a work context because he's like such a, he really stays away from social media. And I also got to actually meet Christian in person when I went to Japan, uh, because we were both there for a convention called bit summit, which is like in kind of indie gaming convention. And it was so fun. I like, but I met him after I was already working on, on Penny and his, how he acts in person is like 100% on brand with literally how he acts in every other context like his kind of like like only like only saying a few words and like being like but everything he says is like it has like impact like that's like exactly how he was in first he's like, he's like hi shorn you know like a, he's australian and <laughs> um and uh he doesn't say a lot but then like when he does it's just like it's just like the most genius thing you've ever heard um and that was really cool just to see how like kind of a consistent person he was ac across like any any space where you talk to him um and i thought that that was that was really cool and um it, he was a really cool person to kind of decide my creative direction uh when i was doing even though t was the lead composer t actually was not like approving any of my tracks and he wasn't like really responsible for like deciding what goes in the game or not that was um hunter was the game director so he was still like he still had like a big say and he would give me feedback but ultimately the direction of the soundtrack was ultimately entrusted to, to christian and he'd be giving the majority of the feedback and i saw huge threads of like t posting a song and then christian be like 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 oh i don't i don't quite like the drums on this can you try like a different drum plug in and he'd be like okay how about this and he'd be like oh, i don't like and just like back and forth back and forth because christian is very particular about music which is also partially why i was so honored to be even considered for this because like to know that someone as kind of picky as christian which is which is a good quality because he has high standards um would like my music it's just like oh man that's that's so cool you know um and the, like i didn't even know if like t liked my music at that point uh, i later talked i i now talk with t pretty regularly and uh, we have a mutual respect for for each other's work which is great um but when I started on the project, I was actually pretty nervous about it because I was like, oh, God, I'm just like a new guy, like coming on to teach project. I don't know if he might just hate my work or, but yeah, so it ended up being, ended up being cool. And uh, I'm also very happy I got to do the launch trailer music because that was something I never would have expected to get to do because it's, he's the lead composer. So just getting to compose the launch trailer was like a huge, huge deal for me. That was, that was awesome. Uh, let me see if there are any other questions that were before so I can answer some. Uh, someone said, by the book sounds a lot different from the other boss music I compose. Uh, yeah, well, it's not. Yeah, yeah, the other boss music I compose. Um, I, my idea for the, the thing is that a lot of my songs, not all of them, but a lot of them were like literally Christian specifically describing what he wanted and then i just tried to deliver on what he wanted uh, in the best way possible by the book was actually this is a fun fact um the judge rufus boss theme was originally for the cutscene, so that was originally going to be judge rufus's character theme uh t wrote it 
to be kind of the cutscene, like Judge Rufus's like character theme that would play the cutscenes. And then at some point they were just like, actually, this is like really good energy for like a boss fight. So then what they did is they moved that song to the boss fight. And then they basically asked me to kind of demake T's song into a more low key kind of thing. So dun, dun. so the boss theme was like, dun, 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 dun. and then my cutscene is like, dun, 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 dun. Do 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 do, you know that kind of thing. Um, well, well that that song is like I think that might be partly because that was just one of the two boss scenes that T did, and uh, T also did the uh, Eddie Bathhouse. Fun. And I feel like like you, the boss themes that were not by me are definitely in a different style than I did because I was specifically like I have a different idea of how I want the bosses to sound. Um and. I just kind of felt like that would be best since I was doing the majority of them if they if I kind of decided uh what the direction for them would be. Um but so yeah, so by the book that was the um that was the concept and I they basically asked it to be like a demake of T songs in terms of energy but with um like marching snare and then I kind of had the idea to like add on top of the marching snare like a, like a like basically like a Y2K drum beat that's like do 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 because I thought that was kind of funny to like layer over top of the marching snare uh because now there are there are two snares playing but one of them is like extremely like crushed and like like smashing your face um uh I think it's the same snare I used on uh Lanto Diablo which is a, a plugin called Moto Drum uh which is very it's it's not the greatest drum plugin but the snare sound is is really good. I really like how kind of bouncy the snare is. Um, and so I use that on a lot of tracks when I want like a really kind of squishy snare that sounds that sounds natural. Uh, you miss your question being answered. Uh, I just answered it like five minutes ago. So if you joined recently, then yes. <laughs> uh, but uh, but it, to, I guess to quickly recap, working with T and Christian was great. <laughs> it was very good experience. And also I was a huge fan of the work on Sonic Mania. And it was, um, they were every every bit as cool to work with as I had hoped. And Evening Star in general was just, just incredible to work with. They're, they're a really great studio. Um, they gave me kind of an unprecedented amount of access to the assets in the game, which was really really helpful for me when i was writing music because it was like i had a lot of stuff to draw from because i could see like all the art assets and all the, the story and everything and uh just being a huge fan of the work and kind of getting to be that involved in the process was was really awesome um but okay let me see other questions uh, what were my main musical inspirations for the game so i it's kind of hard for me to say personally what I was inspired by because basically it was like Christian would give us references like like Jean Jacques like I like I mentioned, but then at that point I would just kind of like, uh, kind of go and do my own thing and I what I normally don't really think of references or inspirations when I'm writing music because I kind of want it to be like my really pure like kind of um, creative vision for each specific song. Uh, and I I don't want it to be like oh this is like me trying to sound like like Koji Kondo or like me trying to make a Castlevania track or something. Um, so I always try to like kind of compose it in a vacuum almost, which is like every, all creative work is based on something else. But I never really want to consciously think about it because I think that's uh, doesn't really lend itself very well to creative work. Even though there's nothing wrong with being like oh I'll make a track in the style of Sonic Adventure or whatever. Uh, that's just not uh, how I think is best to compose uh, for original games because you, if it doesn't look like another game, you don't want it to sound like another game. You want it to look and sound completely unique and you kind of want to build like uh, a unique musical world. And um, that's something that T does in all his soundtracks that I I'm, I really admire. Like on Sonic Mania, he used a synth called a Korg M1 on a ton of the songs with uh he used a, a patch called brass of power a lot that became that's the one that became a mostly a meme but t actually does not use korg m1 anymore on any soundtracks like any soundtrack in the last few years like sonic superstars and penny he he hasn't had a single instance of korg m1 because 
he felt like that was kind of Sonic Mania's thing. Like Sonic Mania's thing was using that patch. And so like he didn't want to kind of have it over other soundtracks. And I think that that's cool. And I definitely want that in my own work as well. Um, so, but I mean, my musical expressions in general, I don't know. I like, I like Jake Kaufman's work a lot. I think he is great. Um, also a uh, composer called Yosuke Yasui is, is very good. Um, and, uh, uh, let me, uh, I don't know. I'd like a lot of, I like a lot of Konami music. Um, T, <laughs> T loves is, is a big inspiration, obviously. Um, I love, um, Mega Man music is great. Uh, Stevie Wonder, not, not video game. That Stevie Wonder, Stevie Wonder is like my favorite. Um, uh, yeah. Also, like fusion bands like T Square and Cassiopeia and Dissolve and Trix and all those, those kind of guys are great. Um, okay. So now I guess we're getting into the questions that are asked during the thing. A few, a few of those. Um, who came up with the final track titles? Okay. So the track titles were. It, they were all Christian Whitehead, except for Jigs Up Penny, which was by the sound designer, Jameson Sutton. But that was like, basically Christian put a prompt in chat that was like, how can we make a play on Jean-Jacques Perret's name with Penny being at the end? And then he was like, I'm not really sure. <laughs> He's like, I'm not really sure what to do. And then Jameson was like, Jigs Up Penny. And he was like, and he just like did it. He didn't even respond. He just like did it. But then all the rest of the track titles, Christian basically came up in like one like frenzied day. He just like he just like wrote down like all of the like all of the track titles basically in one go. And that, that was really cool. Um to see my tracks like just get names just all of a sudden. Um uh did I work purely on music? Are there things in the game that I came up with that are not music related? Um oh let me think. I, I don't think I there were a, there were any like specific mechanics or anything that I came up with, but I played the game like super often. Like I would test builds of the game when I was working on development, so I definitely reported like a lot of bugs, and um, I gave a lot of feedback about how I thought things should work. But I don't think they, I don't think they listened to my feedback, which is fair because I'm just I'm just like the I'm just like music guy, so it's like it's not. I don't really I didn't mind when they they didn't listen to my feedback. Um, but that was kind of like, um, I would still, um, I would still like suggest a lot of stuff. I don't think they really went with it. Um, but busker bonus was something that I actually want to point out was basically hunters. That entire thing was like hunter's idea. And the way that that track works is it's basically every time you get, a, every time you get like a new, uh, uh, kind of series of tricks, cause there's three tiers it changes to a new chord and also an instrument layer is added. And we basically have a dynamic thing rigged up where it's like, there are three sections of the music and one of them, they're like three different things that lead into each other. And if you only do the first tier, then only plays like the first section and then afterward it, it fails. So that was a, that was a really cool thing to kind of get to, to set up with him. Uh, and he, that was like kind of, we worked really closely to kind of decide how that would be in game. So I think that's the closest to stuff that I affected that was not, uh, okay, it was music related, but it wasn't music. Um, it was like the implementation of it as well. Um, why does the forest theme sound like a lot in salt? So T T did that one, and I am pretty sure that was like just literally just what Christian had in his head. He was just like he was just like Christian just is like he just gets creative visions, and he's like, okay, this just this is just how it should sound, you know? He just like that's what Christian does. He's just like I have a vision, it should sound like this. Um, and, uh, so that was one of the tracks he co-wrote with T and uh, basically that was just like Christian would s make like a sketch of something. Um, and he'd be like, this is the, the melody and chords thing I'm thinking. And then T would kind of do all the, the rest of the work. <laughs> but then like, I think they would, they would also like, uh, collaborate while, um, while T was doing the rest of it, like he would send it for feedback and everything, but it was definitely the kind of thing where it was kind of like Christian was doing the starting off point and then T was kind of taking it to that, that final level. Um, and that's how that, that, that track and, uh, 
Pellis, and those are those are all credited properly with T and Christian. So those are you can you can see which ones they collaborated on. Um, um someone asked donut do I made a donut donut related question. I I use Famitracker for that. Uh, Furnace didn't exist at that point. Um, okay. Penny related, but I want your opinion. I practice making music in my own covers. I've been wanting to try and cover a song from Penny. Which song do you think I should try to cover? What's your personal? Oh, definitely Penny in a Pinch. Um, partially because I think that will be, that's like, because of how many chords and like notes there are, I think that would be like the most difficult one to cover. So it'd be really funny to, to watch someone try to cover that. <laughs> just because there's so much going on that it's like it that was it's like one of my most dense songs in terms of like note amount and there's like so many notes in it um but i i also just that's the song that i think is like kind of like the most would be the most fun to, to hear a cover of so that would be so yes that would be that would be awesome definitely please send it to me you do it um that I mean, you don't have to do it but yeah um he says, I am currently trying to break into the games industry. From your experience, do you have any advice on how to leverage personal progress when working, when looking for positions? So I feel like working in games is like extremely kind of chaotic and it's kind of hard to give any prescriptive advice on it because basically every opportunity I've ever had has come from some like really like random place. Like um, kind of a lot of the way that I ended up working on Penny was because I did a soundtrack for a game called Donut Dota, which happened to to blow up, but it was like um, literally just a, a really small game that we were just kind of like, let's make it for fun. And we're like, we'll just like, we probably won't even charge money for it. It's just going to be like um, just a fun thing we do in our spare time. And then when it got released, a lot of people ended up playing it. And uh, a lot of, it, uh, there was this time in like the Evening Star Slack, I guess, where uh, Tom tom the art director had like linked donut dodo and was like oh i found this game with like a with like a cool soundtrack and then christian was like oh this sounds cool and then and then hunter was like oh oh was like, oh i've spoken to that guy before like he's like he's because hunter is also a musician so um and then that was kind of like a, a world's kind of collide moment where they were like also looking for a composer so like that kind of happening was kind of like yeah so that was um a really cool thing but also it was so random like I, I i could have never imagined that that would come from um doing that like small game so i think what i would say is like you just kind of have to do do a lot but also you have to really focus on getting your work out there um making people where you exist and also like talking to people and trying to make connections um because a lot of the time it's not so much about the quality of your work, but like if they, uh, it, the quality of work is very important, but it's also like if you have two people whose work are of the same quality and one of them you've already talked to before, that's kind of like um, one of them, like the one that they have talked to before is going to be the one that gets the job. And that's just, that's kind of how it, it, um, it makes sense because you want to work with something, someone that's reliable, someone you know you can trust. It's not just about, doing a great job even though that's that's very important but you know they're uh like for like for penny there are like a, there are hundreds of musicians they were also connected to that they could have easily asked but just because of the specific work i did on donut dota they felt like i was the best fit so uh yeah so i would guess i would just say uh put a lot of energy out there into the world and meet people and keep doing stuff and eventually uh just things will happen inevitably because that's, that's what happens. Um, not musical favorite. Hugo, that's a piece of macaron lore. Uh, so I'm not. The thing is that my brain kind of conflates stuff that was in the game with stuff that I that I just saw in like the design document. So I don't actually know if I can think of anything that specifically was not in the game. Um. Uh, I guess there's this. Okay, this is not really macaron lore, but I I will say just as a kind of a fun tidbit is that in the in the kind of Google Drive for the game where they had all the game's assets and everything, there was some story document that they made, um, with uh with Sheila, it was like a Sheila 
like boat idiom doc or something and it was like a, a basically a document full of like idioms of like of like sailors like like fair winds and following seas or something like like basically a whole list of that and I, when i saw that document i was just like i'm just gonna like put these phrases in the song as like a rap so there's actually like me rapping in the song but like whispering rapping but it's it's so low in the mix that you you can't really tell it's me rapping but if you listen really closely it's like 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 within the song and it's kind of used as like a texture but it's literally just like me reading idioms from that document uh but yeah that was like just a random thing um and i think that is all the questions but someone is typing i don't know if they want to see that right now but i'm pretty sure let me see if it oh i do i like cheese i like cheese it is great cheese is good um i can't do i can't do any yo-yo tricks um all right you're gonna ask the question <laughs> wait for, for tr one, one, just send the question here in the in the palace scorch channel Yeah, if anyone has any like final final questions, feel free to say them now. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Why did the puppet penny? So I, I I kind of went over that in earlier that the penny in a pinch was originally for Sheila's boss fight. Actually, it was a, that was originally the what I made it for. I made it for Sheila's boss fight, and then Christian decided it didn't really fit the character, so then we moved it to the penguin ball thing. But then. Um, they were just like, oh, well, this is basically my thinking was like, this should be kind of like the, uh, if this is kind of like the generic pursuit theme for the game, then it can also be the world's edge boss fight because those are like the two moments where it's like, you're per like in the case of puppet penny, you're not, you're, you're not really pursuing anything but the goal, but like, I still think it kind of, it kind of works in that way. Just to have both of them mean like, these are both bosses where you're just running the whole time. <laughs> and that was kind of the concept behind them. How did, you actually you pronounce my name like Sean Bilo, so no one will ever get that right by reading it. Uh, they say like Bialo or something. Um, so it's Sean Sean Bilo. The A the A is silent. Uh, it's when people get it wrong in like podcasts and 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 reviews and stuff. I, I don't care because it's like I don't I don't I would also pronounce it wrong if I didn't already know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, no problem, but it is Bilo. My favorite kind of cheese is um, cheesy music. Lol. Uh -huh. What was the main idea when making Mr. Q's theme? So Christian specifically prompted me with, he was like, I want this to sound like science, the song. I want it to just sound like science because Mr. Q is a scientist. And... Um, he linked me some i'm going to i'm wait i'm going to find that track that he linked um because it's a great song and i don't know if you'll be able to hear the influence so it is this track boingo boingo weird science uh this is a track that christian told me specifically to reference <laughs> when I made the song, because it's like a literally a song uh, about science, and it just kind of sounds kind of science-like. Um, there's also another song, <laughs> there's also another song about science that Christian uh, told me to reference. It was this song, uh, She Blinded Me With Science. So, um, yeah, that <laughs> those were like the two references I had and obviously they don't my songs don't sound exactly like any of those songs but I, I because obviously it also had to sound like a boss theme and those those don't sound like boss themes but basically I was kind of synthesizing uh the kind of timbral elements from those songs and combining it with um the feel of a of a boss theme and uh with the sound of penny so that was kind of the the idea for that and uh 
I am uh, pretty, I also a bit of, bit of trivia about that song is like, I wrote the last section of that song. The, uh, yeah, the last section, also the middle section. I wrote both of those parts in the like two hours before I had to like catch a flight. So it was like, I, I, because of the, de the, the delivery deadline for like the, one of the milestones was like that weekend and I had to get, I had to get a flight to Japan. So I would just like, I, I, I spent so long fine tuning the kind of main verse of the song that I just kind of wrote the rest of it like really fast. And then I was like, guys, I'm so sorry. This is really bad. I'm, I'm, I'll like redo this when I get back from Japan. And then everyone was just like, it was just like, oh, this is the best thing you've done for this game so far. I was like, oh, okay. I guess I'll just leave it in then. So yeah, that was just like something like I did, I did extra like polish work on it afterwards, but like the, um, the actual melody and chords and everything were all, I wrote that super fast in a panic state. So I was like, also like really frazzled. And I was like, I was like, Oh my God, I'm going to miss my flight. I'm going to, you know, miss the deadline and stuff. And that's when I wrote that. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of funny that just a lot of people consider that their favorite song in the game. Like a lot of people say that. Um, and that was, I, I, when I wrote it, I was like, this is my worst. This is the worst song I ever made. Because, like I, I had to rush it, uh, the composition, but yeah. Uh, now, now I've come around on it. I think it's, I think it's a good song. Songs to listen to while discovering light speed engines. <laughs> got, some, got some more people typing. I think I'll, I will take, I'll take one more question. One more question. Whoever is, whoever is first to ask. Okay, this is not, a, not a question. Listen to your work for a while, like we actually discovered through the Whoa, Friendship Fantasy. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Yeah, Friendship Fantasy. I was on in like 2017, 2016. That was a, that was a long time ago. And <laughs> Okay, that is okay, that one doesn't count. I, I, I do know Ligma though. I I think it's I think it's great. Don't don't <laughs> Okay, so oh, this is a great this is a great last question. Sorry, so this, this is the last question I'll take, probably. Um, <laughs> does uh does Q and Mister Q stand for something? So it doesn't stand for anything, but it's supposed to um be like the the sound of like Q ball, you know Q ball like C U E because he's a because he's a a pool ball head, but actually his original name. This has also never been said, so maybe keep this on the down low. But his original name was Mr. Eight, um, as in an eight ball, and then it got changed because eight ball is actually trademarked by like Hasbro or I don't know whoever owns it. Eight ball was trademarked, so they didn't want to get sued, so they changed it to to Mr. Q, um, just to like avoid getting sued. But I actually think Mr. Eight was a better name, uh, just like more more fitting for him. But uh, so that kind of sucks, but. All right, so that is. Could they trade about the number? No, it's but but because he had a cue ball head, combined with the fact that he's Mister Eight, that is that is what like would made them worried. It wasn't that like obviously it wasn't the fact that it was a character called Mister Eight. It was that it was like Mister Eight plus that they were they were being extra cautious. They just really I mean I mean they just really didn't want to get sued, which is very fair. I think I, I also don't want to get sued. Um, anyway, so that is that about does it for this. So. Uh, thank you everyone for asking questions. It was very fun. Uh, I hope I didn't ramble too much and I hope I didn't give lame answers and, uh, thank you all for coming out. And if, uh, Rockham wants to say anything. Um, yeah, no, thank, thank you for, um, answering everyone's questions. I thought, well, I thought it was like super interesting to like listen to all this insight you have on the game and like your process and how, like how you do things and stuff. I, I thought it was amazing. Mm -hmm. I have a good podcast. No, I don't. My voice is terrible, guys. Um, I, yeah, I'm. Uh, I can definitely. I drone on a lot when I when I talk, which uh, normally is a problem in conversations. But actually, for this kind of context, it's it's kind of ideal um, for me to just like go on on rants. But hopefully, it still wasn't too grating. Um, but yeah, thank you again, everyone, for uh, coming out. It's really really awesome, and thank you, Rockham, for for setting this up. Um, 
think this is great. And also, I want to thank all of you so much for playing Penny's Big Breakaway because Evening Star works so, 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 so hard on it. And it's I really think it's a really special game. Uh, everyone gave it their all. And I tried my very best to um, um, kind of match what they were doing. But, man, I, literally anyone that, that plays the game, I'm so happy that I've seen so many people playing the game. Um, because it's just like when I was working on it, I knew it was I knew it was really special, and I thought everyone was doing a really good job. And yeah, I just I'm very very grateful for everyone that's played it and um, said nice things about the music and and everything. So yes, thank you, thank you so much, everyone, for the interest. Hundred percent, big up Penny's big breakaway. Um, yeah. Definitely go play some Penny if you haven't already. Yeah, go play Penny after this. or uh, Unless you're doing something else, that's fine. But play it when you have a moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sweet. Um, any, Anything else you want to promote before you go? Like any any other works you've been working on? Uh, I can't talk <laughs> I can't talk about anything I'm working on because I'm, <laughs> I'm under NDA for Um, that's... I guess I... Uh, I released a soundtrack on streaming the other day for Cheeky's Chase. Uh, you could just search my name and it, it'll come up. Uh, it, but you don't. You guys don't have to listen to it. It's fine. I, if you just want to listen to my penny music, that's that's totally good with me. Um, good, like, yeah. I don't know. You can follow me on Twitter if you want. That's it. All right. So yeah. Um, Sweet. But yeah, thank you again, everyone, for for coming out. It was very fun. And uh, yeah. Sweet. I think that about does it. Um, very well. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you.